East Company for a joint venture had collapsed and the rescue deal was off. This morning, workers arrived here at Longbridge in Birmingham in a freezing wind and a flurry of snow as the depth of the crisis set in for the country's last big car manufacturer. Within hours, the administrators had been called in and the government announced a £40 million package of aid to help with the fallout. Well, late this afternoon, Tony Blair flew into Birmingham, direct from Rome, as the crisis deepened. Our first report tonight comes from our transport correspondent, Peter Plisner, who's been following the day's events. A new dawn at Longbridge, but sadly not the beginning of a bright new era. As the media gathered, so too did MG Rover's workforce, clocking on as usual, but knowing that their jobs were far from secure. What can you say? I mean, right, she's been on the wall for years. Well, gutted. From me. But we're, all we can say is remain optimistic. <laughs> That's all we can do, isn't it, really? Like the workforce, Tony Woodley, head of the Transport and General Workers' Union, has seen it all before. He played a leading role in the campaign to save Rover five years ago. Complete despair, quite frankly. I, I am absolutely devastated for my members and for their families. With a makeshift media village inside the plant growing by the hour, enter Trade Secretary Patricia Hewitt. Last night, she caused confusion by announcing the demise of MG Rover before the company had even told its workforce. Whatever was going on last night does not alter the facts or the impact of this devastating blow on the workforce here and on all the rest of the community who are affected by it. At lunchtime, the waiting was over. MG Rover had finally gone into administration. Um, at this point, in this uh, day one of a situation like this, there's a whole series of people who express a lot of interest uh, in, in businesses. It's up to us to try and establish what's serious interest and what people are actually interested in. Before leaving Longbridge, the Trade Secretary announced a £40 million aid package to help stop the region's component manufacturers from going out of business. Sadly tonight, no financial assistance has been offered to MG Rover. It's hoped the administrators can find a buyer for the company, which will help safeguard at least some of the jobs here at Longbridge. Well, away from here, Tony Blair and Gordon Brown arrived in Birmingham a couple of hours ago on a flying visit and went straight to the Transport and General Workers Union offices in the city centre. Their mood looked as bleak as the prospects for the MG Rovers workers. Afterwards, the Prime Minister had this to say to waiting reporters. The one message that we got out very, very clearly uh, from the people that we just met and from, from the conveners of the of the workforce was that they want to keep production at Longbridge. So do we. As much production and as many jobs as possible. And we will do absolutely everything we can to achieve that. Tony Blair there on yet another day of confusion and frustration at Longbridge. But what will it be like this weekend for the 6,000 workers? Unsure whether or not they're going to be paid this month. Unsure if they'll receive redundancy payouts or pensions. Our correspondent Robin Punt has spent the day with two families who've depended on Rover all their working lives. From his bedroom window, a look back over the car maker he joined as a teenager. It's um, another British industry that's just gone to waste again. A hundred years of making cars disappeared within a week. Keith Miles had hoped one day there would have been work at Longbridge for his young sons if they'd wanted it. Instead, he's urging them to stay out of the car industry altogether. He was, like so many, so convinced MG Rover's deal with China would go through. It's just obviously the whole truth just hasn't been told. Um, I mean, it's now as an employee, is what, uh, what guarantees have we got with the future? What's going to happen? Mortgage, car loan and payday, possibly the last of a 20-year career, is two weeks off. Cars born on the Longbridge line end up on what seems like the driveway of every other house in this part of Birmingham. For the first time in 32 years, paint technician Bob Ryan didn't see any point in going to work. The production line lies silent. Uh, I have no idea what, um, what job I'm about to do now. I mean, it's been part of my life for such a long time. In the laundry pile, a shirt he was given by his boss for hard work and innovation. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm proud to wear it because, you know, they've been loyal to me and I've been, I've been loyal to them as far as I, I, I can. I don't know, just, you know. 
Well, I'm joined now by MP Julie Kirkbride, MP for Bromsgrove. In fact, a part of your constituency includes Longbridge, does it not? Yeah. Um, can you believe how quickly all this has happened? I don't think anybody can believe how quickly this has happened. We'd all been told that the deal with the Chinese was on, that it was all going to be all right. It seemed a bit dodgy this week, and then, hey presto, last night um, the Secretary of State came on the television to say the plant was in receivership before it was even in receivership, before the board had decided to do so. And it's just devastating. I've been on the streets of Bromsgrove today. People are, are very upset, very concerned. The wages are going to be stopped on Monday. People who've got mortgages, people who own dealerships are very worried, people who own supply companies are very worried, and it's extremely depressing. Is it fair to apportion blame? I mean, would you have played it differently had you been in government? Well, I don't think it is right to sort of talk about the blame game in that sense. Certainly the government doesn't have a great record on manufacturing jobs, a million loss since they came to power. But we know that there have been historic problems here at the plant, uh, and so I don't think it's, it's quite as straightforward as that. But there are hard questions about the way the government's handled this. Why was it announced that, the, uh, that this was going to be closed last night before it had been agreed? Yeah, I think, I think uh, they would say that that was in consultation with John Towers, wouldn't they? But it certainly wasn't in consultation with the board and the Chinese were saying uh, that as far as they were concerned the uh, game is, is, is still on to cry, try and find a deal. The Prime Minister wants to do that today so why has this all been brought forward prematurely? We want to know that. Uh, there are a lot of jobs at stake. There's many more in the dealerships beyond the 20,000 that we've been talking about uh, and the uh, package that's been put together so far to help certainly isn't going to help all the people who are being affected. OK, Julie Cutbride, thanks very much indeed. Well, generations of people from the same families have followed each other through these gates here at Longbridge over the years. So many people who live around here have connections with the factory in one way or another. Catherine Mackey has been assessing the mood among the local community. For 100 years, the Longbridge factory has cast its shadow over this community. Joseph Hanna worked at the car plant for 36 years. He took redundancy seven years ago and now works as a security guard, but has many friends still at Rover. Close Longbridge and you will end up with a ghost town. We don't want to go back to the docks days, the mining days, where communities, families fell apart because of this issue. Local shopkeepers echo that passion felt by many here about Rover. All the shops around here depend on the the people down there popping here in their lunch hour and you know, it gets a little bit depressing at times but I think it will I think it can only get better I mean you, you've got to feel sorry for the, the workers people have got mortgages don't know how they're gonna live we found Steve Allen and Ian Roberts in the Rednall cafe between them they've clocked up more than 50 years at Longbridge everybody knows everybody else everybody's got family there I've got family there and Steve's got family there you know it's, it's a big big effect people just don't understand they go in their daily lives to these little places but it's a, it's a big family affair. So what of the future for youngsters like two month old Talon whose uncle works at MG Rover? For people in my position with kids and, 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 and that it, it's, it's really bad you know um, I, just, I just don't know what's gonna happen now you know it's just gonna probably bring the area down. You get the feeling talking to people around here that this factory isn't just a place to work but it's part of the very fabric of the local community and life without it is almost unthinkable. British Leyland, Austin Rover, Rover Group, MG Rover. The British owned car industry has been in long term decline but why has MG Rover come to this again? Bekele Padwano has been looking at where the finger of blame should point, if anywhere. Colin Bowkley represents the old guard. He's faithfully driven a Rover since 1976. He blames us, all of us, for simply not buying enough cars. And that's the bottom line. I support the local industry, which a lot of people rely on in the area itself, like, you know. It's like the milkman, isn't it? If I don't support the milkman, what happens to him? He loses his job. It's exactly the same as the Rover car. But the British Leyland strikes of the 70s tarnished its reputation. Some blame the Tories. In the late 80s, its prospects began to improve before privatisation. The Rover Group, which British Aerospace wants to take over, has just announced its best set of figures for many years. At the time, Renault had twice the debt of Rover, but received French state subsidy instead of privatisation. It has since flourished. For many, there's the feeling of betrayal when BMW bailed out. The Mini was kept. You've got no choice other than to go back five years and blame BMW who bought this whole company for £400 million. 
they took the, the Mini, which is a worldwide success. Should the Labour government have acted sooner, with a £100 million loan, a deal might have gone ahead, but there was the danger of throwing away taxpayers' money. And what about the management team? Could they have produced a new model? If not, should they have found a partner sooner? It would not be unreasonable to suggest that perhaps they were tempted by the possibility of being able to stand alone. I mean, MG is a strong brand. Perhaps, though, their demise was due to their size in a global market. So can a phoenix rise twice from the ashes? Well, ironically, this is Longbridge's centenary year. The factory was founded by Herbert Austin back in 1905. And by 1946, it had produced a million cars. Andy Newman's been taking a look back now at the company's proud but turbulent history. Here is a familiar sight along the highways and byways. The Austin 7 on tour. Happier days at Longbridge with its founder, Herbert Austin, at the wheel. The siren blows. It's the signal for hurrying feet. By the mid-1930s, the factory he'd built in 1905 employed 11,000 people. One of the things that will always remain a mystery to the man in the street is where all the new cars go to. In 1959 came the famous Mini. Selling cars wasn't a problem then, although problems of a different kind lay ahead. Houston, use the management. Under the leadership of Derek Red Robbo Robinson, the 1970s Longbridge workforce, over 25,000 strong, became known not for cars, but for strikes. All those in favour, please show. Oh! Michael Edwards was brought in to end the unrest at what was by then the nationalised British Leyland, and a new decade began with a new model. The new Austin Metro, a British car to beat the world. But by now sales and the workforce were shrinking, and after six years in the hands of British Aerospace, BMW bought the company in 1994. To some, it seemed like a winning partnership. I think that creates the best of all worlds for our people. But six years later, following a huge campaign, John Towers and his Phoenix Consortium bought the company back from BMW when the Germans pulled out. They were welcomed back to the factory as heroes, but now even they admit they've come to the end of the road. Well, the head of MG Rover, John Towers, arrived back at Heathrow from China just a short while ago, and he gave this exclusive interview to Midlands Today. After all of that work and getting to the point of really the final hurdle um, it's it's a little understandable but equally quite astonishing um, that we should be where we are now I think that um, the main issue now though is that we've got to find a way of um, helping working with the DTI working with our people to create something afresh and I think that can that can happen in what way can that happen? Well, there's an astonishing amount of logic in terms of the deal that we've been trying to um, promote through our process, um, through, through dint of the, the, the massive hard work of the guys who were there. Um, we, you know, we got to the point where there were very, very few outstanding issues, and, and, and that's created a sense of a possibility, I think, for that... Um, yeah, that strategic um, program. John Towers talking at Heathrow earlier on this afternoon. Right, let's catch up with the rest of the day's news now with Suzanne back in the studio. Suzanne. Thanks very much, Nick. 15 Celsius, and that continues into Monday. Shivani, thank you. Well, that's it from the team here. Let's cross back to Longbridge now and Nick for the very latest there from us. A very good night. Thanks, Suzanne. I'm joined now by the MP for Northfield, Richard Burden. Tell us something, uh, Mr Burden, about this uh, aid package that's been announced. Well, Nick, I've just come from a meeting with the Prime Minister and the Chancellor, and the government has made available £40 million to help the supply chain. It's important we do that for the region, but our first priority for the supplies and here at Longbridge is to do everything we can to safeguard the future of car production in some form, and that's what we're doing. And it strikes me that Tony Blair thinks something can be saved with the Chinese. I don't want to raise any false hopes, but whilst there is just the smallest glimpse of light, then we should go for that and do everything we can, because all the reasons that Shanghai Automotive had for doing the original deal are still in place. I don't say the same deal can be resuscitated, but we should explore every avenue for talking to them and, and any other potential partners to make sure that Longbridge can carry on making cars. It just seems to me that this whole collapse has been precipitated by what Patricia Hewitt said last night. Was she premature? 
No, she wasn't. And Shanghai Automotive made it absolutely clear that they weren't able to go ahead with that deal because of the financial state of MG Rover. Uh, the important thing now is not to start writing the histories of last night or the day before. It's about building the future. And that's what we should all focus our efforts on. Richard Burden, thank you very much. Well, that's it from Longbridge. As I look behind me, I can see that the gates are still open. Let's hope that those gates remain open indefinitely. Good night.